Paku Karis merch is now available on the Edge Redbubble. Support my artists and I via links in the description and comment section below. The Cambrian Explosion was one of the biggest evolutionary events in the history of life on Earth. It was the start of most animal groups alive today, with the diversity in shapes, sizes, and niches that has remained unparalleled. The main hypotheses proposed to explain this extreme expansion of biodiversity suggest that either the genetics of life forms were more flexible than they are today, or the creation of too many ecological niches forced organisms to adapt to them at an alarming rate. Both cannot be ruled out to have occurred together. In life's pursuance of these new niches, similar forms are bound to evolve regardless of the true genetic relation among forms. In short, this means convergence. Convergent evolution is when two groups of animals that aren't closely related evolve a similar adaptation to a similar problem. Convergence in the Cambrian has been limited to only a few glimpses except for the group which has come to be known as the bivalved arthropods. These things were arthropods like trilobites, arachnids, insects, crustaceans, and the like, but had a hard sclerotized shell divided in two pieces over their torso. Sometimes this two-shelled carapace had a hinge, other times it did not. When they were first being chipped out of the Cambrian-aged rocks of the Burgess Shale, they were considered to be relatives within a group of bivalved arthropods given the name Phylocarida. As time passed and many of these two-shelled beasties were scraped out of their rocky prisons, it became clear they were more than just one huge lineage of creepy crawlies. There are many groups which were once considered to fall under one banner but are now clear lineages of their own that happened to evolve similar fixes to similar problems. In the Cambrian Burgess Shale sediments, there were the stem euarthropods, the isoxiids, the hymenocarina, and stem crustaceans. All of these bivalved arthropods show a wide range in anatomy outside of the shared double-shelled characteristic encompassing a huge range of ecological niches as well. There were scavengers, suspension feeders, and deposit feeders. Any new piece added to the knowledge of bivalved arthropods from half a billion years ago goes a long way to fleshing out the story of the arthropods and why these early forms took on the two-shelled approach to life. A brand new one was recently described as Pacucaris opatus, and it's just one more of these pieces. Over a series of expeditions from 2012 to 2018, eight specimens of a new arthropod were taken out of the upper part of the thick Burgess Shale formation around Marble Canyon in northern Kootenay National Park in British Columbia, Canada by a team from the Royal Ontario Museum which included the new paper's authors Alejandro Izquierdo Lopez and Jean-Bernard Caron. All of these specimens were preserved as two-dimensional carbon or aluminosilicate films of the entire animal, most of which had all of their soft tissues preserved, some even with remnants of their gut contents. These specimens were carefully prepared in the field, chunked, prepared for travel, and brought back to the museum where they remained until they could get some further preparation via airscribe. These things are tiny, so the scientists working on them needed to photograph them under a stereo microscope. When all was said and done, the thing was named Pakukaris apatis. Paku is the Japanese word for eating and is what Pac-Man's name was derived from, and Karis means crab. They named it after Pac-Man because the shells kind of look like Pac-Man. The species name, Apotis, refers to Apoti, the Greek goddess of deception. The fossils show a small shrimp-like arthropod with a ton of segments and a ton of legs. There was a huge hardened shield that covered the first two-thirds of its body that were the eponymous bivalved shell. At the front, it formed a sort of helmet, with two large voids for the eyes and mandibles to fit through. It also had two pointy projections at the bottom of the holes for unknown reasons. In some of the fossils, this dorsal carapace is positioned upwards. 
The researchers interpreted this position as a result of being a dumb, dead, creepy crawly. You know, distortion of the body bits after death. That's because there were also some that had their shell in the position it was when it was alive over the actual body. The weird thing about Pakukaris is what is seen after the big double-valved shell, a pygidium. If you manage to find my highly underrated trilobite videos, you'll know what a pygidium is, but to refresh, the pygidium is a hardened shell that covers the back end of trilobites and some other arthropods. It's not quite a telson, but you could think of it as a short, rounded tail. In trilobites, it functioned as protection and to help roll up and roll out. It's present here in a rather distantly related arthropod is quite unusual. This is convergent evolution between Pacucaris, the trilobites, Kylinsia, and the Molisonids. Although similar structures appear in the crustaceans, this is the first time that an out-and-out -out pygidium is seen in the mandibulate arthropod. It was noted that the segments in the thorax and pygidium of Pacucaris increase at the same rate. If this is happening like a dozen trilobites, then that would mean segments created in the tail end matched the rate at which they were released. There may be two different varieties of Pacucaris, since the fossils preserve a bunch of small ones and one big one, differing also in segment number, but since there were only eight fossils, nothing conclusive can be said about what those different varieties mean. Let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to show us just how small these crusty mini-beasts were. The smallest ones were around 1.16 cm 0.45 inches long, while the largest one stretched to 2.66 cm or 0.98 inches long. That's damn small. Thanks, Mr. Man. The authors who described Pacucaris found that it fit best into the Hymenocarinae group of stem mandibulates. This group consists mostly of other shrimp-like bivalved arthropods like Hwaptia, Odoria, Canadaspis, Clipicaris, and the probably dubious Urgicaris, which I made a video on if interested. That being said, it's still the only one in the group with a pygidium. So, Pacucaris shows us how different these Cambrian bivalved arthropods can be. This makes trying to organize them more difficult to clarify. Pacucaris also presents some features that may be quite important to the understanding of early arthropod evolution. More will likely be forthcoming. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.